Good day. Did you like that? I found out. Of course, I can't use any music out of my iTunes because of copyright issues. But uh, there's a little sub program in my video production program that allows allows me to add little soundtracks. So I dropped some on the opening frame and. Uh, the closest thing I could find that reminded me of Mary Tyler Moore show, and I thought, what the hell, you know, that's something we can all relate to. So then I had to get some water, which is extremely difficult to get right now. I brought a new fridge in for me today, and it's like an eighth of an inch <laughs> too tall to slide in under the cupboard, so it's uh, blocking my kitchen currently while I wait for the manager to come back and deal with that issue. But uh, that's not really what I'm here about today, so uh, I want to go back to what I was talking about yesterday, and that's the Children's Hospital. Spent a fair amount of time at the Children's in the last couple of weeks. Uh, as some of you are aware, oops, I won't get it later. Uh, some, of you, some of you are aware, I, I do some volunteer work with ESL families that have children with special needs. One of the families I've been helping out, and she's a single mother, uh, Chinese family. Her daughter was admitted through Emerge here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, her daughter has a very complicated physical issue, wheelchair bound, nonverbal. Very cute little girl. Uh, so I've been up at the children's almost daily. Uh, it's a Chinese family, so there's interpretation needed. I've been bringing on an interpreter with me who is a also somebody I've been involved with, but uh, partly because it goes beyond just language interpretation. There's a lot of cultural issues that have to be taken into account. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's why I've been there so much, and uh, needless to say, it's changed a lot. Well, it's actually a brand new building now, but uh, even in the, in the delivery, this child was in ICU, so uh, the children I was in you didn't have an ICU, you had a, a utility room uh, where in the case of bad infections and so forth, that's where you would go. But of course they didn't have the equipment back then they have now, so you could put somebody that required ICU care into a smaller space because there wasn't all kinds of machines around, uh, as they say in the meaning of life, you know, the machine that goes ping, none of that shit was there. So. Uh, I'm just commenting on the difference between, oh, um, just give me a minute, somebody's knocking at my door, hopefully it's to finish off this fridge thing. I'll be back, but then we'll get back into the children's. Okay, hold on. Yeah, that was Barney, so now I not only have a new fridge, but the uh, floor behind there has all been washed and cleaned, which was something that obviously hadn't been done for a very long time. I know I've never moved the fridge and I've been in here three years. So anyway, that's done. Let's get on. Uh, let's get back to discussing the children's. So as I said, the, the children's uh, hospital that I've been in, which is physically still here in Calgary, it's just used as a, a clinic now. Uh, the new one was built up uh, a number of years ago. And uh, Personally, I think it's kind of hideous on the outside, but, you know, they like bright colors, and that does appeal to children, and I'm probably a traditionalist when it comes to hospital. I know the, the first time I ever saw a male nurse, I was in the Foothills Hospital at the time following a car accident, and I was horrified because nurses weren't supposed to be male, but... Uh, so I guess that made me kind of a traditionalist, and I still have a bit of that, but of, of course, well, I've matured a little. So, you know, back, back in, in those days when they were dealing with polio, and by the time I was 16, I'd had 14 surgical procedures, uh, which had enabled me to get rid of a lot of my braces. Uh, but, you know, complications happen. That's uh, the... That's the reality in a hospital. And when complications happened back then, uh, because we didn't have the technological advances we, we now see in the hospital, 
as I said, we didn't have that little machine that goes ding, you know. But uh, basically, those types of complications were dealt with uh, with a wing and a prayer and antibiotics. Uh, that was the extent of it. Uh, you, they they did what they could at the time, but health medica uh, med the, the the whole field of medicine was. Uh, pretty raw compared to where it is now. Uh, that's one of the areas technologies improve the most. Uh, of course, it's a double-edged sword on that one. So, But anyway, by the time I was 16, I'd had four good friends die in the bed next to me. Uh, that doesn't account for all of the kids that uh, passed away in the children's. Those were just the ones that were uh, in the bed next to me. Uh, you know, people die in hospitals. That's a reality. Uh, and when you consider it uh, between age 3 and 16, you know, with eight years of that in the children's hospital, the four immediate deaths, that's that's not bad, really, when you look at law of averages. But the reality is uh, people do die and children did die in the hospital. And it, it really has an impact on, on your psyche and your attitude towards death. I didn't realize that till much later in my life, but in those days, that was that's just the way it was. And you could tell when it happened, and I'll, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. I haven't explained really the physical structure of the, of the children's of that day. Um, and I'm not going to today, but uh, at one point I will get into that. Uh, I'm working on a on a book on this kind of stuff, and uh, I've described it much more aptly in there. But the I was on the third floor, which was the top floor of the children's hospital. That's where the teenage boys were. Teenage girls were down on the first floor. Uh, there was definitely some thought put into how they separated people. Uh, the rooms, there was only one room that was what you call semi-private, you know, two people. All the rest of the rooms were either four or six kids in each room. Those six-room kids would have a partition, a part partition, because we used to climb up with, and sit on the top of it when we had water fights, uh, throw our water jugs at each other, would separate two beds from the other four. Uh, the doors into the patient rooms uh, where the old hospital doors, you know, they have the sliding window on the, uh, so that the nurses could peek into the room. When the doors closed, which they would traditionally close them when we had to, we had to have a nap every day. That used to drive us nuts, but we had to have a nap every day after lunch. And they would close the door. Uh, the pneumatic springs were on them, and it would always remain about, you know, eight to ten inches uh, open unless they pulled it the rest of the way. Uh, you knew when somebody in another room uh, had died uh, because the nurses would go down the hall and close everybody's door and they would close their little slide panel on these windows. Uh, they would close the slide panel. Um, I never quite could figure that out because none of us kids were high enough to look out the window, but they would. And none of us were that stupid that we didn't know, okay, Bobby, Bobby John's not going to be there, you know, this afternoon. This type of thing. So uh, we we were pretty aware. But uh, again, I'm coming right to the point. Death happened. You, you sort of just that was part of part of life in the children's hospital. Uh, but I did know, you know, for the four friends of mine that, uh, and this, the other kids I, I knew as well. But they, you know, the, these four were like family. They were like brothers. That's that's partly how the children's was. And I had made up my mind at that point. Uh, for each one of them that passed away, I was going to go out and live extra hard for each one of them. Uh, I was going to capture some life for you, for all of them as well. And uh, some some people would tell you I more than did that. But when you grow up and you've seen kids die, and you've grown up listening to people say, "Too bad these kids won't have long lives." Uh, and statistically, of course, I didn't know this at the time, but statistically, you know, the average age was 25 to 30 years uh, lifespan. I had decided quite early uh, that I was going to do all the living I could because if I was going to be dead by the time I was 30, I was going to cram everything in I could, and uh, some of it was going to be done for these for these friends. I, I wanted to make sure, you know, that that they had some life through me as well. Uh, 
Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not any, trust me, I'm the furthest thing away from a saint you can imagine. Uh, I wasn't doing or making these statements for any altruistic reasons. I just, uh, that's really the way I felt at the time. Uh, these were friends of mine who I'd spent a fair amount of time in the, in the hospital with, uh, that uh, circumstances took them early. So uh, that was just a, another thing I could put on my list as an excuse to be wild and crazy and irresponsible. These were the kind of experiences, though, that had uh, really been established as my belief system back then. So, uh, my wanting to squeeze a bit of life out of this for these friends uh, helped contribute to my rebellious nature. What I didn't realize at the time was that I'd be able to call on those now as a justification for why I was such a shithead as a kid. Ah, oh, it's an amazing world we live in. <laughs> However, with that said, you know, what uh, they say, what goes around comes around, and uh, that certainly happened. I was uh, pretty crazy and irresponsible for the, the 25 to 30 years I thought I was going to live, and uh, you know, I guess one a uh, benefit again of uh, having had polio so early in the advances in, in uh, health care and, and health in general. Uh, is that I managed to have my midlife crisis at about 27 years old when I realized, holy shit, I'm not going to be dead when I'm 30. I better get my shit together. Uh, which saved me, you know, 24 years of waiting for it to come. So, anyway, that's, that's going to be it today. Uh, I'm going to go out and enjoy the sun. Believe it or not, I started this thing at about 10.30 this morning, and here it is at 3.30 in the afternoon. So have a good day. Thanks for dropping by, and I'll uh, talk to you later.